the way our streetcar barns. And, and this is pretty accurate. Some student did this. Uh, it doesn't have the line out through Hopkins, but it, for the most part, it's pretty accurate. You know, I don't know if it's on the website or not, Ben. If it isn't, we should put it on. The, uh, the curator at the Clay County Historical Society in Moorhead, he said he got in some, uh, some film, and what you're going to see is like 11 seconds of Fargo-Moorhead. That's crossing uh, the Red River, and we'll run this one twice because it's so small. But uh, the, fir the start of it, you actually see the color of the cars. And now that is not, um, Fargo-Moorhead had, um, I think they were Brill, of Birney's and our Birney is the last one that they bought in 1923. They needed one car because they opened the line to Concordia College in Moorhead and ours is, a, is an American uh, car company Birney which has different ventilators on the roof. It doesn't have the square ones, it has round ones. But anyway, th these, uh, this is footage I never expected to see because the system quit in something like 1936. The, uh, the cable cars on Selby Avenue and on East 7th Street in St. Paul, the Selby cable cars ran from 1887 to, 19, uh, to uh, 1898. And they, they, you probably saw the cable car issue I did where they were single truck grip cars hauling single truck trailers. This film surfaced recently. This is 1928 and it's the last run in San Francisco, the Pacific Avenue line. And by gosh, if they don't have single truck grip cars and, and old horse car trailers on this, and this thing runs exactly like the Selby line ran. And so this thing goes about 10, 12 minutes. Uh, but what you're, what you're looking at is exactly what ran on Selby Avenue. So, and the, this was a newsreel footage. And one of the things that's really interesting to watch, and you'll see this happen a couple of times, is a runaround. As a matter of fact, that's the first thing he's going to do. This will also show you how, how uh, four uh, single truck cars were bouncy in a bad ride. Now here he is at the end of the line. Now watch what happens. The conductor goes and tightens the handbrake. Now they're on a hill. And so this is how the, they turn around. This is exactly how it worked on the cable car lines in St. Paul. Now what he's going to do with gravity is coast back down if he doesn't get hit by this car. <laughs> and this is a, a, a spring switch or something because you notice he didn't have to do anything with the switch. Now the conductor has released the brakes on the, on the trailer. And so you had to have the uh, you had to have the end of a line on an incline to do this. But that's what they did. Now you'll see this in more detail in in, in a little bit. And uh, John, note, note there's no layover at the end of the line here. He simply turns around and goes. Well, I'm not sure about that. I, uh, <laughs> they may not have let them have any layover. This is San Francisco. It's Pacific Avenue, wherever Pacific Avenue is. And this was the, la uh, this was the last day of this line in 1928. Okay, now uh, here he's going to do it again. I don't know if he's at the other end of the line or what he is. These ladies are going to get off and, and turn around because they want to ride back. You got people. So he's going to wait for them. So you notice, I mean, he hasn't pulled uh, the grip lever, he's just coasting.
And in a minute, you'll see a close-up of how he couples up. See, now he's got that gooseneck uh, handbrake. Now what he's doing, and you'll see this in more detail, um, he just dropped, <laughs> it was a railroad spike, down into the Lincoln pin coupler. And then what he does is he hooks up a, a pair of chains, safety chains, and they, you'll see that in, uh, I think he's going to show it here. See, now once again, that's the, the brake lever because he's got a grip lever and a brake lever. Okay, now you'll see how he does it. And now you notice the coupling is loose. Trailer trains were, you know, loose, uh, lurched and banged, and so you, there were a lot of accidents with him there. And now he's picking up those little chains and putting them on, and off you go. Okay, and uh, there he releases the brake, and then he engages the grip, and off he goes. Ding, 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 ding. Now, now, the rest of this, I don't think we'll run the whole thing, but the rest of this is just kind of uh, scenes of, along the line. Uh, we can run it for a couple of minutes. After that, it gets a little, little tedious, but... Uh, And, you know, cable cars went about 8 or 10 miles an hour. I think some could get up to 12 maybe or something. And of course, they, this is the last day, so things got a little rowdy. <laughs> this is uh, a movie from New Zealand, and a lot of them are, are outtakes. And the whole movie phone library of old films that they used to make the, uh, the news reels uh, went to the University of South Carolina. And USC now is starting to edit them, and there's some really great steamroll uh, things from the from the 20s into the 30s. Uh, the next one will be the inner campus, and that'll be the sure. Yeah, we'll give it just a little bit longer. There's a couple of uh, San Francisco streetcars, electric streetcars that cross in front of this thing. So I think, well, I think we'll run it up to that point and then we'll, uh, we'll quit it because it just kind of keeps going on. But you do see the, the gripman there just off to the right. There you go, there goes one trolley across. <coughs> and uh, there'll be one more, and then, then, we'll, then we'll turn it off. About the last five minutes of this is they had a parade with the, with the, the last cable car and a parade with all kinds of people and, uh, and such. And, you can hardly see the cable car for all the people riding on it. Of course, the advantage of cable cars is, you know, it didn't matter how steep the hill was. You could go up or down it.
There you go. Marcus Street Railroad. Yeah, one of the big, what they call the Iron Monsters. And okay, I'd say you can stop it at that point. Now, the, fi the final one is this one. And I found this in the archives of the University of Minnesota. This is the last, the last run, the last day of the inner campus, which, of course, with the Como Harriet was the very last line in Minneapolis, St. Paul. So this is June the 18th of 54. Right? Should be. It had a veteran crew on it. By this time, the gate cars were gone. They were running like 1301 and 1302. And here you are um, going behind the University Grove. That's, uh, we're eastbound, that's Cleveland Avenue, which the streetcars went under. So anyway, he's made a stop here for the U Grove. He's letting somebody on and off, ding, ding. Now we're coming into the farm campus. You see all the barns there on your left. The track was a little wobbly at this point. There is a siding. They would bring freight cars up in here. We have at least one picture of a box car on that siding. And he's approaching the loop at the St. Paul campus. Now he's in the loop. You can see somebody's waiting there for it. This is over on the kind of the northeast side of the campus. Oh, he's leaving the St. Paul campus. Now that switch right there, that track to the side, that went down to uh, the power plant. And they would bring coal cars up the line. Um, and their work car, would, which, which would haul the coal cars, uh, would sit on that spur. There's the other uh, spur track for other freight cars. Now he's just passed under Cleveland Avenue again. There was a stop just east of Cleveland by the agricultural fields. And of course the inner campus, uh, because it was owned by the U of M, um, uh, the streetcar company ran it under contract. and. Um, you, you, you could not transfer between this and any other line. It was a separate fare. You paid three cents on this. There was a student punch card, three cent punch card. And they said if you didn't have it, they'd, they'd take it out of your account. Okay, now we're going along Eustace. We're turning on to Como Avenue, which uh, they shared. There was a passing siding here just north of Como. And then they shared Como Avenue uh, with uh, the Como Harriet line. There you see they're meeting an inner campus. Either that, no, that could have been a Como Harriet car that was, yeah, he's backing out. That's a Como Harriet car that was lying out after the St. Paul portion of the line was done. So now we're in Como Avenue, we're about to go under the Minnesota transfer, once again going down Como. And this will switch to color a little bit later. And call John Prestolt and do something with that retriever, because it's not it's not real it's not reeling the rope in. Uh, okay, we're uh, on Fifteenth Avenue, uh, coming up to the bridge at Dinky Town, right at Fifteenth and Fourth. And there you see the Como Harriet turning off to go up Fourth Street to downtown. And now we're coming into the Minneapolis campus loop. And if you go in there today, there's this traffic circle down here, and the reason that you can, the reason that there's a traffic circle is the streetcar company, the streetcar used it. There you can see the Dinky Dome in the background.
but the road configuration is still round like that. And he's now at the Minneapolis stop. And now we go to color. The cars were getting pretty shabby by that point. There you can see one of the new buses. Thirteen oh two. Thirteen hundred itself was part of this crew, was part of this group for a couple of years, uh, and then they put it back in regular service. But that's the reason it's got a fare register up in the back, was that they used fare registers on the inner campus. That was the last place they used them. Um, they had gotten rid of them on the rest of the cars in uh, the 1930s, but they kept them on the inner campus cars. And of course, that's one that's had the wood wainscoting replaced with sheet metal on the outside. And they also kept conductors. This was the last line with conductors until the very end because they collected the fares on the car with the punch cards. You got a couple of really high seniority guys there. this goes. I think we're getting close to the end of it. Oh, yeah, that's it. So there we go, folks. And uh, anyone who wants to stick around and watch, uh, if board members could come on up to the table, we'll have the board meeting. And I uh, thank you for coming.